Thank you. I want to change a greeting. A couple different people asked me when I came in how I was feeling and I said okay or good or something like that. I want to change that and tell you that I'm feeling mighty fine because I got heaven on my mind. I, I'm feeling good. And I'm looking for that meeting in the air that's going to happen. Very, oh, I believe it with all my heart. And sometimes whenever we face the battles of the day and the trials, th th then we say, well, I'm just doing okay. I'm not doing okay. I'm doing great. I'm doing mighty fine. I've got heaven on my mind. And I'm looking forward to the time when I'm in that land where the milk and honey flow. I'm going to ask Nadine if before I preach, if she'll come and she'll sing for us one more song. I, I love her ministry. I love her singing. Amen. And I thank her for coming and singing for us this evening. Praise the Lord. I apologize for for earlier on, I asked Kathy, is this on tape? And she said, yeah, it's live stream. <laughs> that was a song that we used to sing together a long time ago. And it was, it was good to sing it again, though, with Kathy and, and uh, praising the Lord. Um, it's been a while since I was here, and I've been um, in Wisconsin most of the last month in Wisconsin. And... Iowa and Minnesota and visited my little sister a lot of you know my little sister Dolores or Tinker <laughs> we know her by and so but it's good to be back in the house of the Lord I did get to go to church uh, three times went twice to a uh, yeah 
is another Pentecostal church. And then my niece's husband is the pastor of a Lutheran church in Minnesota. So I worshiped with them on one of the Sundays I was there. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter where we go as long as we worship God and we all worship the same God. Praise God. And uh, so I appreciate uh, Ray asking me to sing. It's always my pleasure to sing. Uh, the first song I'm going to sing is Little Is Much. Feel now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling to the harvest, calling you. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it and He'll not forget his own little is much when god is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in jesus name run he will say if we are faithful welcome home my child well done the Lord. You know, it's true. Sometimes we think what we're doing is, is not much. And it may not seem much to you. But when you go with God and let him go with you, it's much. Little is much when God is in it. So never, never think that what you're doing for the Lord is nothing. Because whatever you do in his name, he's going to bless it. Hallelujah. And um, the other song I want to sing is Learning to Lean. And that's another thing. When we learn to lean on Jesus, we will do whatever he wants us to do. Sometimes we feel like we can't do it. But when we go in Jesus' name, we can do it. And we learn to lean on Jesus. Okay, Brother John. He is teaching and I'm learning. I'm learning to lean, learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. 
I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I'd ever dream. I'm learning. Jesus, learning to lead. Precious Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, musicians from the bottom of my heart. Your ministry. Through your ministry, the Holy Spirit is ministering to my heart right now. And I need the ministry that I'm feeling right now. Us preachers can never stand in front of a congregation and let you know that we're going through a battle or discouraged because they say it is our job to uplift the congregation. And many times the congregation doesn't know the battles that you're going through. And it's good when I can sit in the church and be ministered to. And I thank you, musicians, because I know that all of us, as we battle on, fight the good fight of faith. that there is certainly going to be a meeting in the air. And I guess that's what encourages us and keeps us going, but there's times people when I just get homesick for heaven. I'm just homesick for heaven. My mother was close to dying and my wife came to me and says your mom wants to go home Raymond just go tell her that she can go said she's struggling there's something tell her that it's all right if she goes and she had told us so many times I just want to go home I just want to go to heaven and that's hard but I went in and set in the bedroom with my mother. I said, do you want the family around here? Is that what you're waiting for? And I called the family and I said, mom needs 
everyone around. She struggled and hang, hung on and that's a hard thing you asked me to do, honey, but I did it. I went and said, Mom, it's all right. You can go home. They started singing around the bed. Her expression changed and she went to be with the Lord. And I walked over and closed her eyes and knew <laughs> that the place that she wanted to go was heaven. Holy Spirit, I feel your presence, bless and anoint this service. I've read about that place, heaven. John the Revelator got a vision of it. And he said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, <laughs> New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Almepha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my sons. And the fear, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. And he talked with me. And he said, Come hither. I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And he showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone, like a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and the gates twelve angels, their names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and its length is as large as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 150 and four cubics, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of a wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, 
the third cal and I can't pronounce that calcedony the fourth was an emerald the fifth sardox the sixth sardis and the eighth beryl the ninth topaz the tenth crystal Ferris, the eleventh, chaseth, the twelfth, amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And this street of the city was pure gold, and it was as transparent as glass. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. Oh, now I know. Why in so many revival meetings I've seen Jericho marches, I've seen people dance up and down the aisles in times gone past. I can see hands uplifted. And the Pentecostal people were shouting that would make almost the building shake. And the song that they were singing is in that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where there cometh no night. I have a mansion over there. I'm feeling mighty fine. There's going to be a meeting in there, I'm convinced. It will not be long until I, I will be singing. It's worth it all. It's worth it all when we see Jesus. I feel his very presence on the platform. I feel him right now. I, I don't care about my notes. I, 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 I just feel his presence and I want to worship him. I want to get as close as I can to him and I know he's here beside me. But as one writer said, I see through a glass dimly. But on that day, when I hear the trump, I'll behold my Savior face to face. <laughs> Hallelujah! What a glorious time that it's going to be. And how do we get to this place that you singers have been singing about tonight? by falling before the Lord who died for us in our place and repenting. Repenting means to turn around. It don't mean to say I'm sorry and do the same. Repenting means to turn. You go the other direction. You start living a different life. And you tell the Lord that you're sorry. Now none of you have the problem that I do. <laughs> See, I, I, I don't know, I, I've always found it easy to forgive somebody. If somebody has wronged me and they ask me to forgive them, I've never had a problem forgiving them. Amen. 
I, I mean, I can just, it, 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 that's all right. I, I don't have time nor do I even want to go into the times that I've been wrong and I forgive them and, and for, forget about, forgot about it. You know what's hard for me? Is to go to someone and ask them to forgive me. I mean, I, 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 that, that's hard. And I, see, I, I, uh, pride is something that God hates and you've got to conquer. And I hope that it's not pride. I know I was in a service one time and Sister Kimsey was preaching on pride and she was just hammering all over me. And on the way home, I turned to my wife and I says, Well, honey, one thing about it, I don't have any pride and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I can remember as a kid one time, young, my brother and I were just kids and we got into it over something and it seemed like they thought it was my fault. I can't imagine that. And my mom told me to go apologize to my brother. Oh, that was hard. He should come to me and then I would forgive him and be all, I, 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 I but my, I knew that my mom had a way of convincing me that I needed to go apologize. So I went over to him and I said, I'll apologize to you if you apologize to me. <laughs> and he said, you apologize first. And I thought, no, because what he's thinking is after he apologizes, I, I won't apologize to him. And I know you apologize first. And then finally, my brother said, Mom! Raymond won't apologize. Well, I knew I'd better get that over with really quick because mom was going to take care of it. And so I told my brother, fully expecting him not to apologize back. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. And he looked at me for a while and finally he said, I'm sorry. And I said, King's X, I had my fingers crossed. I mean, hard to apologize. And, and, and he says, Bob, Raymond wasn't, didn't mean it whenever he, he apologized to me. And see, I had, I'm, I'm young, going to church. I, I was figuring the other day how many services that I might have been in, and I know that I was over 2,000 services by the time that I got to high school. We was already in church. I went to over 1,000 services just in the time I was in high school. So by the time I got out, you know, who I so I knew something about the Bible. And it, it, it says that you have to forgive someone. Well, I got it backwards, and I told my brother and... Unless I forgive you, you can't go to heaven. <laughs> now he's really hollering. And so I see my mother coming, and I know what's going to happen. And I says, I apologize, I apologize. I'm sorry. We got it all settled. It's hard. It was hard for me to ask forgiveness. But I doubt if anybody could wrong me in such a way that I can't forgive them. But that's what we have to do. We have to go to the Savior, kneel, and say, I'm wrong. Would you forgive me if we want to make this place our home? I'm not following notes much. I'm, I'm feeling the... the did you like the singing last it, Sunday, it, it touched my heart and when Brother Ben sang, I love the man in the middle. Yes, oh yes. Yes, amen. Yes. See, there's a story in the Bible in Luke and, and, and go with me for ju just a moment to the cross. And Jesus, after being whipped, crown of thorns, you know the story. I hope you don't know it so well that it, it ever calluses you. I hope it breaks your heart every time you can see it. 
And in your mind, see him as he's hanging on the cross. And there is a thief on each side fulfilling the scripture in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, I believe, that says, that tells that he was numbered among the outcasts. And I look at them My Savior doesn't belong there. I do, but He doesn't. He, he's dying for me, and on each side is a thief. They, by their own admission, they belong there, but not my Savior. And one of them even facing death is mocking Jesus, come down, save yourself, and save us. And the other one has got a repentant heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I told you sometime back that you need to read all the Gospels when you read a story because only Luke tells this story. The other, the other, it just says that he was nailed between two thieves. But Luke tells about it. And he says, one of the thieves turned to the other one and said, we are getting what we deserved, but not this man. Right. Oh, we need to preach more about the next few words. Because then this thief turns to Jesus. Lord, I've spent years trying to get somebody just to turn to Jesus. I, I wish I'd have been more successful, but I trust that heaven will be richer for the years and the sermons. And I was just saying, will you just look to Jesus? And he does. He, he turns and he looks to Jesus. Remember me. And Jesus said, This day, <laughs> Julie, I, he said today, not today. In just a little while, you're going to be with me in paradise. Is that what keeps you shouting? Because somehow I feel in just a little while we're going to be there. In just a little while, face to face. In just a little while, heaven will be our home. In just a little while, the battle, it's too, it's too late to give up now. In just a little while, we're going to be with Jesus. Now, Jesus dies and we know that well, well, he gave up the ghost. They didn't take his life. He gave his life. And then we know that he arose three days later. On his, but where was he at? See, he wasn't laying a stake. Remember, Jesus said, today you're going to be with me. So Jesus wasn't in some kind of state for two or three days before he rose. He, he, he was doing something. Hallelujah. He was doing something. If you read over in, uh, let me see if I can find it really quick. Uh, I, I need to read this if I can. Uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. It says, wherefore he, the fourth, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse, wherefore he saith, when he ascended, I'm going to, uh, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to the men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Yeah, he, he was busy. And he went to a place called paradise. And you, and you say, where is paradise? Well, 
in Luke, the 16th chapter, if you read that, you will find out that, and this is not a parable, because never in a parable has Jesus gave a name. This person, this and he said it was a parable. But this is about the rich man and Lazarus. And they are named, and it says there was the rich man and Lazarus, and they both passed away. And one of them went to where the righteous uh, goes to Abraham's bosom or paradise. And the other was tormented. So paradise was in the center of the earth at that time. And it was a place where they could see each other and they could communicate with one another. And, and if you remember, the rich man looked over in, into paradise or, or, or into Abraham's bosom would be the better words. And he saw Lazarus. And he says, send Lazarus over to me that he might just, having just, uh, I, I can't even imagine a glass of water. That but just have him dip his finger in water and just touch my tongue. That's all I'm asking for. I'm tormented in this flame. Abraham says that's impossible because there's a, a gulf fixed. And those that would come from your place to here or from here, it's impossible to cross this gulf. So they were in a certain place. See, when before Jesus had died, the righteous saints went to paradise. And there they were awaiting. I mean, they, in their lifetime, talked about the Messiah, prophesied about the Messiah, believed, but he hasn't came yet. And they was in this place, paradise, waiting for Jesus, like I'm waiting for Jesus. And then Jesus gave up the ghost, and he descended into paradise, yes, there to preach. Hallelujah, can you imagine? Yeah. David is there. Elisha is there. Hallelujah. All these old saints is there waiting. When do you think he's going to come? Yes, it's been a long time. Have you ever said that? You think he's coming? Yeah. Oh, we believe that he's coming, but it's been so long. And then all of a sudden the gates rattle. The chain is broken and the gates open up and there stands Jesus. And he says, I come to take you. And I just read to you where it says he took the captive. Hallelujah! And took them, hallelujah, to glory land. Hallelujah! And he conquered death, hell, and the grave. Now, as far as I can read in Scripture, paradise is no longer in the center of the earth, but now the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. And I remember when Stephen was stoned to death, he looked upward, and there he saw Jesus, who's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He knows what's going on, but Jesus is standing now. He's standing to welcome Stephen home, and Stephen declares, I see Jesus standing to welcome me home. Listen, you that have lost loved ones, don't you be discouraged. Jesus' eyes is upon it, and he will do the same for those that he's paid such a price for. I believe that when they left this place, Jesus stood to welcome them home. Hallelujah! And that's all that I want in my life uh, is to be ready that when he calls that I make it home. Hallelujah. I just want to Make it home. Singers, I love you. You, if no one else gets anything out of this service, I will. Because there's going to be a meeting in the air. I might be crying on the outside, but I'm feeling mighty fine on the inside. And, I, and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to make it. 
And you're going to make it. Francis, you're going to make it. Brother Bill, you guys are going to make it. You're going to make it. Won't be long and you'll leave that last song. And then you'll be singing over there. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Art, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. You're going to tickle that piano for the last time over here. Then you're going to be shouting glory. You're going to make it. Rod, you think you can play that? We, we, we love it, man. I haven't heard anybody can point to you play over there. Yeah. Rod, you're going to make it. Yeah. Honey, pretty soon I won't be getting on your nerves anymore. We're going to make it. Our <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the encouragement that I feel in my heart and my soul. We're going to make it. Master, soon and very soon we'll see the king. <laughs> and right now I want to pray for everyone that is under the sound of my voice. I want them to make it. I know you want them to make it. Give them the strength and a fresh anointing and a determination to be faithful. Yes. Until that time. Yes. And until then, may we lift up our head, get a smile on our face and say, I'm feeling mighty fine. I've got heaven on my mind. I can almost hear the trumpet. Oh, I'm feeling mighty fine. Uplift them and give them courage, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Saints, thank you. I'm different than I was when I came. As I said and I heard the singing, there's something about, I can't sing, but there's something that it does to me. And it encouraged me. And I want you to be encouraged. Don't let the devil pound you down with negative thoughts. Tell him to get behind your back and he'll flee from you. Start smiling again. Be happy because there's going to be a meeting in the air. God bless you. Be friendly. Be back. Hallelujah. God bless you.